when the cup runneth over The needing for thirst isn't focused as much It's not about needing some more But knowing enough and giving of love And seeking for self and seeking for more I can be open some more Back, blessed, and better than ever. We are here tonight at Social Status, located in Charlotte, North Carolina. My name is Julian, host of the Proceed with Caution podcast. It is a pleasure, honor, and privilege to be here tonight um, with Joe Pastel, The Drop, a 99 production, and all these good-looking people. Oh, God. Goodness gracious. Uh, good-looking oh, people. Can y'all do me a favor, good-looking people? Can y'all make noise just one more time like y'all did at the end of the performance? One more time. Give some noise. Make some noise to Joe Pastel. I don't know. Okay. Yeah. That sounded real good. Thank you all for being here. Uh, man, that was, that was a beautiful performance, man. Uh, compared to the last time I saw you, we did the music video for Better Friends. It's been a while. It's good to see you look good. You look, you've been drinking water. Oh, yeah. Yes, sir. I've been um, trying to stay healthy. I mean, you're shining, man. Thank you, you so great. much. Um, compared to making a music video, how does this experience compare? Just from a feeling uh, standpoint, process. Talk to me about it. I think this is like the the idea of like when you perform in front of people, that's when like the music actually comes alive. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Because like when you uh like with me, I like making music when I'm by myself or in like a, a setting where it's more secluded. So I can, you know, actually think about my thoughts and actually find out a way to kind of like transcribe it in a way on paper and then release it out of me in such a way. But I think when you're in front of people, you kind of get the chance to give it to the world and let the world um, have its chance to interpret how they want it, mm -hmm. right? Because I think at the end of the day, when everybody's a creative in their own way, right? But the art that each creates, creative that we make, it's all interpreted by hundreds and thousands and thousands of people, right? In their own way, whichever way that helps them out. And I think that's the thing with my music, because I like to call my genre like, therapeutic soul music at the end of the day. Ooh. At the end of the day, I want you to actually just feel something. Right. And I think that's something why I like words and, and actually being able to say something at mm -hmm. the end of the day, right? It's like the music in itself is music, but the music is a call to action at the end of the day. You know what I mean? So. Agreed. Mm -hmm. Well, you just answered like three of my questions. Straight up. So that's great. <laughs> um, but I, I agree with you because while you're performing myself, I just kind of got lost. I felt almost safe. I don't know if anybody else resonates with that, but it's calming. It's almost centering. You speak to, everybody here can relate to the performance, right? You speak to humanity, and I can appreciate you for that. I thank you for that. Um, but, see, so you answered one of my questions, but why music? Can you elaborate on that a little more? Like, why music as your vehicle for your message? You were saying it reaches people in a way that, um, it's almost like wavelengths, I guess you were alluding to. But is there anything else you want to expound upon, like, for your reason for music? Because you're intelligent, man. You can do anything. I'm waiting for you to fly up out of here. <laughs> <laughs> but why music in uh, general? I mean, I think it's just because of like my background. Like I said, like my father, uh, my dad, he made plays my entire life. Like when I grew up, I was, grew up in plays. Like that's all I saw. Like okay. when I was a kid, I was in plays. I seen him make music from scratch into nothing and then actually put on a full play and sold out crowds. And I'm thinking to myself is like, how is this happening, right? Mm -hmm. And then blessed enough to be able to uh, be around <laughs> creative people and to have a studio at the age of 13 and not know nothing about music. So you go inside of the studio with your brothers and you make a remix to Martin Luther King's, I have a dream. Mm. I, I, I have a, you know what I'm saying? So, okay. and then, you know, you branch off of that and you just keep going. And at, at that moment too, I think everybody has something that they enjoy to do. Everybody has hobbies, everybody has things. But at the same time, it's like, when you're creative, you're, you're a vessel from, God, the universe, however you want to see it, you're a vessel, right? And what mm. comes out of you is something that has never been here before. Even if it's been said before, it hasn't been said in your form. So that's why I chose music. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, your own delivery. You do it in a very unique way. Again, I was saying it was calm and it's, it's beautiful. I mean, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I know y'all did too. Um, you mentioned starting at the age of 13. Um, so as you progressed, as you've grown, what would you tell your younger self? Because you're here now, and then look, look around you. Look at this moment. This is gorgeous. But what would you tell your younger self? I think I would, t I would tell my younger self that just like, uh, I would say, have faith in yourself. Mm -hmm. Like, at the end of the day, life is going to disappoint you anyway. Oh, yeah. 
Like, it's going to disappoint you. It's going to make you feel like your hopes are going to be high. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? And something's going to happen and it's going to make you feel like, well, damn. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, I was that close, but I would have I would have told my younger self that at the end of the day, it's like no matter how bad it looked, that's mm-hmm. not the end. Keep pushing. Because I was so focused at that moment of thinking that when something crushed me that it was over with. But at the end of the day, it's like, if I'm still leaving, living, I still have the opportunity to try again. Right. And nobody's ever been like crucified over trying. Mm-hmm. And I think more people should try. And I, that's what I would tell my younger self, to try at everything that his heart wanted to do at that specific age. You know what I mean? Agree. Mm-hmm. I think I might have mentioned that earlier. Um, just never pushing through, getting a message is what I was trying to say. But that's great. I, I think everybody can walk away with that and take it and apply it to their everyday life. Um, I guess it's a similar message to upcoming artists. That was my next question. For any upcoming artists, creatives, you have a similar message or more? Yeah, I, w- I would say for like something that I live by when it comes to music is music, art, just in general, I would say when you're creating anything, create what's real to you, not what you think is real for other people. And I'm a, and like I have to create what's real for you, not what's what's not what you think is gonna be real for other people, right? Mm-hmm. Because your experience and your story is just as important as the next person's story too. Agreed. And I and me and man, like and me and my girl, we talk about this all the time. It's like you think about this is like you have a story, but what's the point of having a story if you don't allow other people to read it? It's this pointless. You're, you're putting your own your own self on the shelf, mm-hmm. and then you expect other people to find you. You can't do that. Nope. You have to put yourself out and make copies and let here you go, here you go, here you go, and let people read your story because 100 percent we all go through similar experiences. It's just different emotions that's attached to it. Mm-hmm. I mean, authenticity. Exactly. Perfect. See, I'm with you. I'm locked in. Oh my God. I I swear, I'm nervous. I'm trying to tell you. But still, uh, moving on. I'm talking in front of all these people and they're just looking. It's the good looking people crowd. I can't really help myself, man. They look great. Um, What else did I have to ask you? Uh, From you mentioned Westside Boogie as well, your um, experience with meeting him and then making a song with him. That's got to be an out of body experience. Um, so I guess he's, you said he's in your top five. Yeah. Who's four, three, two, one for you? Where do you that's, get your inspiration? Man, that's ridiculous because I, I, I don't, I don't even feel like I should answer that. Oh, you know, we don't I feel like that. Bra- okay, but if I'm for you for real, okay, so man, that's going to be rough. Like, are we talking about dead or, dead or alive? Either or. It's okay, cool. I'm just so, here to speak. Top one, Andre 3000. Okay. Hundred percent. That didn't get a lot of um, love. Y'all right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. 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 Andre 3000 is number one. Two, Kendrick Lamar. Mm-hmm. Three, J. Cole. Four, Drake. Do not hate me. I, think I don't hate you. I think he is a very great entertainer, musician, lyricist. It's whatever. I don't care. Five, and West Side Boogie. What's up, Boogie? Yeah. But okay. I mean, at the end of the day, I feel like throughout the years, it changes. You know what I'm saying? But as yeah. of right now, that's like what I'm on right now. But Andre 3000's spot has never changed. Just because I think, Ever. like, lyricists, like, storytelling-wise, I don't think nobody's touching him. That's just my opinion. I mean, some people will agree. Some people will disagree. It's your list, my brother. Right? It's your list. <laughs> it's your list. Um, okay. Uh, Drake, I will always resonate with. If y'all hate me for it, it is what it is. Um, <laughs> also, uh, to pivot a little bit, you mentioned you're from South Carolina. Any other South Carolina representatives in the building? South Carolina. South Carolina. Okay, there we go. I'm from North Carolina. That's still cool, though, North Carolina. No, that that didn't get as much love. It's the same. Now, as a Carolina native, um, what does Carolina mean to you? I think, like, South Carolina means, like, a lot to me just because at the end of the day, it's like South Carolina is a state that, like, kind of gets, like, looked over a lot. Okay. In, 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 in all honesty, like when we come into like any type of industry, mm. like we're the last ones that you talk about, right? right? That you ask anybody, you be like, name somebody that's from your state that does music or does art, right? Mm-hmm. And then the thing is, when they come out of where we're from, they'll go to another place and they'll latch on to that. Right. A lot of people from South Carolina has left South Carolina, went to Georgia and claimed Atlanta, 
right? At the end of the day, I feel like there's, and, and I'm sorry, but that's 100% real. <laughs> it's just like, I feel like South Carolina as of now is growing. And I feel like one thing that we're doing is that we're growing in loyalty at the same time. Agreed. Is that we're learning that we don't need to outsource when we got it all in house. Right. We got people that can do videography. We got photographers. We got artists. We got everything that we need at home. And I think if people can see from now, from back in the day, the progression from South Carolina is crazy. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I mean, this is living proof of it. I stand we're, on that, yeah. We're sitting in it right now. Oh, 100%. I mean, we, we made this all happen, Frankie. Can we give Frankie a round of applause oh, yeah, one more time? Stand up, Frankie! 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 Thank you, Frankie! Can I say one thing? About oh, please, you going? please. Let me say one thing. Absolutely. I have to say this one thing, right, about my boy Frankie, right? I will say this. Frankie, uh, if y'all know him, if y'all don't know him, my man is a genius. And I say that full-fledged, my man is a genius, right? I remember, I remember just off of the, the stretch of just the idea of music. And one thing that he has done, has done in my life has, has always had belief and faith in me and has actually worked off of that belief and faith and has moved mountains. You get what I'm saying? Dude. Like, moved mountains. Like, for real. Like, when talking about positions, talking about levels, talking about places that I've never seen, that I haven't even... In. I remember we made a... Uh, I've never in my life, entire life made music for somebody. Never made music. Frankie made me make music for somebody. Frankie came and picked me up from my crib, and we went all the way to Atlanta and made music. Stayed there for, what, two days? Two days. Came all the way back, right? Mm -hmm. But the thing is, is like, I would have never thought that that was possible if he didn't believe in me, if he didn't stay on me. So that's one thing that I would say about Frankie. At the end of the day, Frankie, he is a winner, but he makes winners in his circle. Yeah. Ooh, he hates when we Damn. do that. Damn. <laughs> That's a, but it's, it's some real it's, shit. It's, 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 it's 100% real. truthful, though. It's 100% truthful. Frank, I'm going to say one more thing myself, if that's okay. Oh, God. Uh, I think he says this one thing all the time where he goes, I see the vision. And the first time he said that, I was like, I don't know what you see, but <laughs> if, if you see it and I trust you, I'm going to walk with you and go through whatever trial and tribulation. Um, we've been through the trenches, uh, both with my own platform and any other thing that he involved me in this. And for me, I, I think that's a high gratitude. He sees potential in everybody. Yeah. He sees connectivity. He sees greatness. Yeah. He's got a weird, like, I thing going on. He can just see it. I, I can't explain yeah, it. Genius on God. That, that's the last time I'm going to talk about you. Thank right, you. Yeah, we're going to leave you alone now. Thank you, Frankie. Thank you, Frankie. Thank you. Thank you, Frankie. Thank you, Frankie. I also Frankie. think that's a uh, perfect segue to close out the main portion of this interview. We got some rapid fire questions for you. Okay, cool. And then we're going to close it out. Okay. Rapid fire. It's only three of them. Okay, cool. <laughs> First question, are you a morning or a night person? And tell me why. Morning. Why are you a morning person? Because I be getting up and I be like, I'm the type of person that gets up and wants to have conversations. <laughs> and a lot of people, do like, it's like, that's not like that shit at all. They'll look at you and be like, now you know damn well. <laughs> it is seven in the morning and you trying to talk about how, my, how am I feeling? I, I, I want to be to sleep. Look, man, I'm not a betting man, but I would, I would probably bet that you're a morning person. You feel me, but... <laughs> probably a little bit of both. A little bit. So, so like, and that's, so at nighttime, it's cool and all, but, like, I don't know. Like, morning time, I just feel like back, back then, it's like you can get to the point to where, like, you get stuff done. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, it's like, I've realized that, yeah, you can be a morning person, but just because you're a morning person doesn't mean everybody else is a morning person. So you have to respect their daily schedule, I guess. I mean, yeah, so... There we go. Morning person. Morning person. Julian is not, I repeat, <laughs> not a morning person. I'm trying to be, though. Now, y'all wake up with attitude, bro. Y'all just be person. mad. Like, y'all just be, y'all just turn around and just look and be like, not today. Bro. Not right now. But then when y'all get y'all coffee or y'all get y'all teas <laughs> or y'all do y'all love routine, then y'all good. Then I look at y'all like, who was I just dealing with 45 minutes ago? But that's cool, though. But that's cool, though. We, we all need a Joe Pastel in our lives to make sure we're getting up and active in the See, morning. Yeah, that's it. Okay. That's it. That's it. Next question. Okay. Th there's a lot riding on this one. Are you a drums person or a flats person? We're trying to get to know you personally. Are we talking about chicken? I'm talking chicken wings. Talk to me. Drums oh. or flats? See, look, I ain't going to catch. This is important. Look, this is right, important. Look, I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. And I really, 
this is I, I really don't care. Like I think the chick I don't care. The chicken is chicken. I feel this like matters. it tastes the same. See the it thing matters. is no no. This, this is real life. This it is real. Matters. There's no 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 no. There's no way in the world you can tell me a real difference between eating a drum and a flat. It's the same chicken. And I don't care what none of y'all got to say. Let's make it happen then. You can't say it. Wait, should we take a vote? Yeah, a yeah. Vote no, we, can, we can take a vote. We can we take can a vote. Feel the crowd out. If you're yeah. a drum person, it, yeah. drum people, can you raise your hand? If you drum eat the people, drums, don't be don't raise be your bashful. Hand. If you eat the drums, raise your hand. Ooh. Oh, that is. Thank you. We got we got another drum. Okay. If you prefer drums. If. Okay. Okay. All if right. you prefer drums. Watch this. Watch this. Okay. If you're a flats person. It's two hands. Flats. Oh, hell no. <laughs> Okay, now if you eat both, put your hands up. Y'all okay. some liars, y'all right. some liars. Chicken is chicken. <laughs> chicken is chicken. Like y'all tripping. I didn't, mean, I didn't mean to cause no turmoil. Nah. <laughs> I was just wondering. Y'all okay. like, no, man. No, 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 It matters just a little bit. No, 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 look at this, look at this. Y'all hear this, y'all hear this? We got a debate. That's turmoil. Y'all be acting like the flats got some type of secret seasoning in it. It don't have it. Y'all are lying. Y'all are just lying. It's, I don't know. If you eat both, I guess, you, you know, you're playing the great game. There's no turmoil. I apologize for causing a ruckus. Sorry about that, y'all, but... Last... I feel it, I feel it. More serious question. Okay, run it. If you weren't making music, what would you be doing? Damn. Oh, I would be a psychologist. Okay, talk to me. Yeah, Where's that from? Yeah, I would. I would be. I would probably be a therapist if I wasn't doing music. You appreciate the mind. Yeah, yeah. I was. Yeah, a hundred percent. Just because at the end of the day, it's like I feel like at the end, like living this life in general is hard. Mm -hmm. Like no matter how we paint it, put it, picture it, like it's it's a it's it's ups and downs. No matter like the whole way through. And I think, and what I think too is that I feel like as an individual, we just live through moments. Right. Moments. Like this right here that we're in right now, this is a moment. Once we leave here, we're going to enter into another moment, to another moment. So the, the stresses, the anxieties, the happiness, the joys that lives in those moments, they might not be in the next one. Right. Right. So in order to do that, you have to work on your mind. And that's an ongoing battle. Every day. The mind is the ongoing war that we live in within ourselves. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, therapy and stuff like that, like psychology has always been something like I've been super cool in. And I always told myself if I was like super, super old, right. like 60 or 70 and my locks were like gray, I would be a <laughs> professor and just doing just doing me. Man, I think you do a great job, honestly. You know what I'm saying? I feel like I would too. If you ever decide to put both hands and both buggers, can you? Can I holler at you? Come bro? through. Come uh, through. My man. And that thing is too, I'm giving out free sessions too. So. Ooh. No money, free sessions. Just that's, come talk to me. That's how you get clients. Come talk to me. But but you know what's crazy though? I always told myself too though, like when I when I'm at that at a point in my life, I told myself I wanted to be a therapist. But then I also told myself, well, dang, like if I'm gonna be a therapist, like I'm gonna need a therapist myself. Oh yeah, that's a thing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Just because like you gonna have all of that emotion and stuff on your shoulders. And at that point in my life, I just couldn't take it all. So I was like, well. <laughs> Either Music. way, Let me look, you can do either or. You're extremely exactly. talented. I mean, I've never seen anybody <laughs> like you, honestly. Um, before we close this thing out, tell the people what you got going on. Where can they find you? What's coming next? Oh, right. okay, cool. So I go by Joe Pastel, like I said, as J O P A S T E L. And that was like the space, right? So uh, I'm on Apple Music. So on, on anything you type in, you can find me right at the moment right now. Um, I've been baking. I've been making, I'm gonna be honest, I've been making like music, but I have not really been making music like that. And that's just because I'm experiencing life. I feel like sometimes as an artist or an individual, you can get to a point in your life where you feel like you're at writer's block and you can feel upset with yourself. Like, dang, why am I not thinking of nothing? And I'll be getting frustrated. Like it changes my whole mood for my whole day and I'll be mad at everyone. And then, I mean, I'm, I'm saying that for real, but it's because that I'm more frustrated with myself because I know that I should be doing this at the moment, but it's not coming out. So I really had to realize that when you're feeling like you're in writer's block, it's not that you're not coming out with anything, it's because you're not living enough, right? And a lot of us, we just be, we just be living, but we're not really existing. Right. And a lot of people just be living, but they're not really existing in their life, like really taking the moment to spend with the people that you love, choosing and asking yourself, what the fuck do I love to do? Excuse my language, but it's real because I had to ask myself that. What do I really like to do? Because I had no idea. 
oh, I found out I like bowling. I really do. I really enjoy it. It, okay. it's, it makes me happy to go and hit some pins, I guess, right? But <laughs> I had to figure out what really made me happy, right? And at that moment, that's kind of like where I'm at at the moment, right? I'm finding things in my life right now where I'm actually gaining genuine joy from, and I love this experience. So at the moment, if I know that I cannot write, at the moment coming from past experiences, I want to write based off how I'm feeling right now, and it's going to take a little moment. So when I say that I have like a project or I'm writing music or it's coming soon, it is coming soon. I wouldn't give you a date, but at the moment when it does come, just so there's going to be some of the best stuff I ever made. I will say that. Oh, God. My man. Look, again, messages. Yeah, that was some real vulnerability. I will say, too, vulnerability is one of the biggest superpowers that you can ever have in your entire life. Like, for real, for real. Like, actually being honest with yourself and being honest with other people and not being ashamed of who you are is one of the biggest superpowers that you can ever have in your entire life. Because if if you are so cool with who you are, so cool with who you are, yo, nothing can hurt you. And I understand, I've been through it all. I've been through, still going through it, right? Where I'm thinking like I'm missing out on something. I'm missing out on this. I'm missing out on that. Somebody got this or damn, I ain't got it. So now I feel less about myself, right? But you are the only person, Julian, nobody can be Julian. Nobody. Chelsea, nobody can be Chelsea. Nobody. Frankie, nobody can be Frankie. Josh, nope, can, nobody can be jo- Josh. Jesse, nobody can be Jesse. Kai, nobody can be Kai. So it's just like nobody can do you the way that you do you. That's just some real life stuff. So once I started and starting to realize that and understand that now, it's like I don't mind living in my story because I know that my story is going to be my story. And I'm done. Thank y'all. My goodness. Make it one more time. Make some noise one more time for Joe Pastel. My goodness. That is how you close out an interview. My right. God, we put a bow on that you thing. You should have dropped the mic. Hey, like. <laughs> I didn't pay for them, but I, oh God. You know, never mind. I don't want to. We would never do We're that. Not, we would never do that, <laughs> ever. <laughs> <laughs> this has been an interview with The Drop. Thank you, Joe Pastel. Thank you, Choir, wherever y'all at. Y'all did great. Thank you, Crowd. Thank you, Thank you Social Status. Thank That's y'all so wrap. much, man. Thank Give a hand clap for y'all sales. Word up. Word. That'll do it. It got me a nut, but now for this shit from my heart Can't call him and tell him I'm sorry cause we grew apart bro. Can't love with a wall, can't, can't love in the dark Can't love with assuming that one day it's falling apart Energy goes in ways of intent, so hopefully mine is still pure bro. bro. These energy sobers, emotional loaders They get what they need from the source of the voice, yeah Like your service is over, for real Not when it come from the boat The need from Thursday, they focus so much It should've been you so many moments I miss, I made the dumbest decisions, I'm sure that it didn't exist, I said I love you, but I never told you.